All right, so this will be the first set of four video notes for the domain eukarya unit. So these notes will be about kingdom protista, or your protists. So here's your introduction. All protists are eukaryotes, which means they have complex cells. They can do asexual or sexual reproduction. And most are single cell. There are a few multi, which I'll show you as we continue on this on these notes. And the theory is they were the first eukaryotes on Earth. And they also must have moisture to survive. They cannot live in dry environments. So in continuing with that first eukaryotes on Earth, there's something called the endosymbiotic theory or endosymbiosis. Well, you should remember that symbiosis or symbiotic is a relationship between two organisms. Okay, so what this is, is this is a theory to explain the origin of eukaryotes and complex organelles. So the idea is a large prokaryote engulfed or ate a smaller prokaryote, and then they lived symbiotically. So it ate another one, they lived together. <coughs> and then the idea is that they eventually evolved into a single organism, or a eukaryote. So when you have one cell inside of another cell, like is shown in this picture down here, it's going to eventually turn into these organelles. So that's the theory behind the first eukaryotes on Earth. So how do we classify a protist? So they're classified on how they get nutrition. These are terms that should be familiar to you. So animal-like protists are heterotrophs, meaning they eat others. Plant-like protists are autotrophs, meaning they make their food. And fungus-like protists are saprotrophs, which is a new term, but it means you feed on dead or decaying matter. First, then, animal-like protists. Like I said, heterotrophs. They are single-celled. All of your animal-like protists are single-celled. And you might be thinking, okay, well then what do they eat? If they're so little, they're just one cell. They eat algae, which is a plant-like protist, bacteria, which is a prokaryote, or other animal-like protists. They're also known as protozoans or pre-animals or the first animals. And they're grouped according to how they move. We're not going to get into the specifics of them, but they are grouped according to how they move through their environment. Plant-like protists are known as the algae. And they are autotrophs, which we said make their own food. They're, they can be single-celled or multicellular. This is where your multicellular protists come in. And they contain things like chlorophyll and other pigments that rely on the sun to create food. Fun fact as well, your plant-like protists actually produce 70% of the Earth's oxygen. And these ones are classified based on their color pigment and their structure. So here's the examples of how plant-like protists are classified, just so you can kind of see the variety. So you have your algae, 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 but kelp, which is right here, it's multicellular. Kelp is huge, big plants. Obviously, that's a scuba diver there, and that's a kelp plant. You also have your dinoflagellates, which cause your red tides that can happen. You have your diatoms, which are what's in your toothpaste. And then you have the euglenoids, which are in lakes and streams. So the last category of protists is your fungus-like protists. And these are known as saprophytes. Saf saprophytes, meaning they feed on your decaying matter and they absorb nutrition that way. Their cell walls have cellulose. And examples of these are things like slime molds, which is over here, water molds, or ick in fish. If any of you have ever had an aquarium, you should be very familiar with ick. It's like this itchy parasite that fish get. It actually makes them like rub their bodies against the sides of the tank when they get this. So some important structures then about protists. The flagella, this is a term you should also be familiar with. It's a tail that helps them with movement. These are going to be your 
animal like protus. A pseudopod is a temporary projection of cytoplasm. And we'll, I'll show you a live video of this. It's not as fast as you may think it seems. But basically, if you look down here, you see this weird looking protist. And they stick out these ends. And they eventually collapse around this food item or whatever they, it is that they're after. And then it becomes inside. Some other structures, cilia is like hair. Think about pili, which was on prokaryote, same thing, like little hairs. These like flow back and forth. You have a macro and a micronucleus. The macronucleus, macro is bigger, micro is little. So a macronucleus is your main copy. A micronucleus is your backup copy. And then there's a contractile vacuole. So if something contracts, it's like squeezing. So the contractile vacuole, it looks like this little star here. It squeezes and pushes out all the excess water inside of the protist. As you know, protists live in moist environments, so they have to make sure they keep a stable amount of water in their bodies. And two other things, these are a little more unique, is the pellicle which is a layered structure. It kind of goes around here, like around the cell membrane, and it allows them to keep their shape. If you're floating around in water and you're like a big blob of jelly, you need to be able to keep your shape. You also have a trichosis. This is a pellicle type, which this is your pellicle, structure, and it actually projects. It's kind of like a stinger on like a stingray or something like that. And some protists actually will secure it into something while they're feeding. That way they don't float away. And those are your notes on protists.